Thanks for joining. In this lesson, we will practice working with request headers. We will learn how to attach custom headers to our requests and explore the practical implementation of handling headers in the code. Additionally, we will introduce Postman, a powerful tool that will assist us in testing and manipulating requests. If you have any questions or need clarification along the way, feel free to comment below. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting lessons like this. Let's jump right in and start learning. Postman is a comprehensive testing tool, specifically designed for working with APIs. Its primary purpose is to simplify and streamline the process of building, testing and documenting APIs. While there are other similar applications available, for this course we will be using Postman. However, feel free to use any tool of your preference. Postman has a user interface that resembles a web browser. It includes a URL bar from which you can send various requests. Speaking of requests, let's send a GET request similar to the one we sent earlier in the browser. To do this, we need to enter the address 127001 followed by the port number. I will copy the entire URL string from the browser and paste it into Postman. Set the method to GET and click the SEND button. As you can see, we receive exact same response as we did in the browser. You can utilize various tabs in Postman, such as a ROW and PREVIEW, to view the output of the server's responses. Our code segment has successfully provided a response since we made the request to the address and port where Kestrel is running. Now in Postman, let's uncover the hidden headers and attempt to access one of them. Let's say we access the user agent header. So I will add additional lines of code which will access the user agent header. I press enter and the response is updated. So, we have received the reply. Now let's examine the process step by step. In Postman, which acts as a client, we selected to send a GET request to the server. We sent the request to the local host, specifying the port number. Kestrel, which was listening on this address, received and processed the request. Upon receiving the request, Kestrel extracted the necessary information, such as the address, user agent, header from the request. It then constructed a response and sent it back to us. Postman, acting as the client, received this reply from the server. So, why do we need Postman? The main difference between a browser and Postman is that we can use Postman to send various types of information to the server, including custom request headers. The headers you currently see in Postman are standard headers. But what if we need to send a header like auth or ID, or any other custom header. That's where Postman comes in handy. It allows us to craft and send requests with custom headers, providing us with more flexibility and control over our interactions with the server. I will add two headers in Postman, auth key and ID, each with some random numbers. In Visual Studio, using the same approach to read the request headers, we will add additional code to access the newly created request headers auth key and id. Then we press the send button in Postman to send the request. And we received headers sent from the server. Or we can add a verification. If auth key is true and id value is 1 to 3, then execute this piece of code also. And let's also simulate an error. I'll add the old string which provides the status code 500. And as you can see, the 500 error is here. That's one of the possibilities of Postman. As mentioned earlier, sending a POST request from a browser without a user interface is not possible. To send a POST request in the browser, we would need at least a simple HTML form. Let's review the information we discussed earlier. The first five requests – GET, POST, DELETE, PUT and PATCH – are commonly used in web development. GET is typically used to retrieve data from a server, while POST, DELETE, PUT and PATCH 
are used to manipulate data in database or modify the state of a system. When accessing a web form, you typically have two HTTP methods at your disposal, GET and POST. With the GET method, when the form is submitted, the form data is appended to the URL as URL encoded parameters. These parameters are commonly referred to as a query string parameters. For instance, if you have a form with fields for name and email, and the user submits the form using the GET method with the required values, you will receive the query string containing the form data. The form data becomes visible in the URL, allowing it to be bookmarked, shared, or even cached by the browser. But when the form is submitted using the POST method, the form data is sent as the body of the HTTP request, separate from the URL. The data can be sent in different formats, such as URL-encoded form data or JSON. In the case of HTML forms, the default content type is URL-encoded. This is the most common way of sending form data to be processed on the server. The form data is not visible in the URL with POST request, make it it more suitable for sensitive or large data, such as submitting data to be stored in a database. In both cases, whether you use GET or POST, the form data can be processed on the server to perform various actions, such as storing data in the database, performing calculations, or triggering other server-side operations. The choice of using GET and POST depends on factors like the sensitivity of the data, the size of the data, and the intended purpose of the form submission. So, what is the request body? Let's go back to Postman and see it yourself. In Postman, there is a tab called Body. In this field, we can input any desired content. Let's write a string My Body. When we send a POST request, this data will be included in the request sent to the browser. I will select the POST method and press the Send button. Visually, nothing seems to have happened, but in reality, the server has received this data in the request body. Now we need to retrieve this data on the server side. We need to add additional code to retrieve this data. I will add a variable to store the data. And when we run the code, the response indicates that the expected data is a type of stream. So, data what we received is a stream which is a sequence of bytes that can be read or written sequentially. It contains data from the request body. It allows us to read the data byte by byte, or in chunks, and it's a standard approach to handle large data. To access the stream, we need to use the Stream Reader class. I will quickly add the necessary code. Now, if we send a request from Postman, the text we provided in the request body will be returned by the server as a reply. So, we have successfully retrieved the data from the server, including the body using programmatic means. In Postman, there are various types of data that we can choose to send. The current data we just sent is in a raw text format. Other available options include form data, URL encoded, binary, and more. You can choose from a drop down menu to select different data formats such as text, JSON, HTML, and others. I'm going to make some modifications to the current code and add a few if conditions for GET and POST requests. This will allow us to observe the outcome of the data exchange between Postman and Castro using different requests. I will create variables to access the path request method and request headers. Additionally, I will include the two custom headers, auth key and id, that we created earlier. Next, I will add a condition for the GET request. For the GET request, we will check if the URL is the root URL, or if it contains the path user. For the root URL, we will simply iterate over the headers and also display the values of the custom headers. For the user path, we will verify if the URL query string contains the parameters active and ID. If only the active parameter is present, we will provide a specific reply. If neither parameter is found, we will provide a reply stating that no parameters were found. 
The next if condition will be for the post request. We will use the stream reader class from the system IO namespace to read the request body. Then we will use the parse query method to parse the request body into a dictionary of key value pairs. In this case, we will use the string values types in case there are multiple values for a key. We will iterate over the dictionary using a for each loop. Now let's play with the requests. The first request will be to the root URL and we received the reply successful including auth key and ID. And these headers are double because we looped over all headers and then on the auth key and ID additionally. Next check will be with a user path. First check will be to verify if active and ID are present on the query string. I will write the string and as you can see the kestrel replied we are good. Next if active is in the query string and the ID is not and we pass. And with next run I'll keep some symbols here in the URL string to get the third check. And we pass again. So with get method all is clear. Now let's see post. I'll change the request from get to post. I will add the string user id is equal to 1 to 3 to the request body and send a post request. As you can see, castle responds with the request data. If I add subscribe true to the body, the output will be updated to, to include these parameters. Let's see the result. The reply shows that both user ID and subscribe are present. Now let's revisit the diagram where we send different requests. As you can see, we send both a GET request with data encoded in the URL and POST request using the request body. The strings we send in both cases are identical. But the POST method within the body is more secure. In order to debug the code, let's see how we can retrieve the values directly in Visual Studio. We will place a breakpoint for the request body variable. Then we need to send a request from the postman. I will press send. And in Visual Studio, we need to step in. I will press step in. And as you can see, the value is right here. With this breakpoint, we can see the entire string as text, and this code has successfully parsed the string into a dictionary. Now I will change the breakpoint to access the dictionary. We'll send the request again and step in. As you can see, the values are available and we can access them easily. If I add more to the query string, such as user id123, subscribe true, status confirmed, we will see that the dictionary contains three key value pairs, exactly matching what we have just sent. And congratulations! This was a lengthy part and in the next lesson we will start discussing middleware. And as always lesson assignments. At the conclusion of each lesson I highly encourage you to complete the assignments as they will greatly contribute to your progress in ASP.NET Core 7. By consistently practicing you will see faster results in your learning journey. And the assignments answers you can download from the GitHub. The link is below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!